Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about egg binding in leopard geckos. Now you might be finding this video because you suspect that your leopard gecko is egg bound and I'm happy to tell you that this video is going to hopefully bring you some peace and hopefully give you some information that is going to be beneficial to you and your situation. Before we get started, I want to note that I have a video, a very long video, about egg laying and ovulation in leopard geckos. I will include that up here and down below so make sure you watch that in full in addition to this video, especially if you do in fact have a leopard gecko that is ovulating or developing eggs or even laying eggs. I also ask that you please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, consider supporting us on Patreon or by becoming a channel member. We would love to have you. And with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So a little bit of information about my experience with egg binding in leopard geckos. I have a gecko named Melisandre who has been egg bound before. So I, I do have unfortunately experience with this. And I have a lot more experience with leopard geckos geckos ovulating and laying eggs because if you don't know I have over 30 leopard geckos and a lot of them are females more than half are females so I have a lot of experience unfortunately when it comes to leopard geckos laying eggs ovulating etc also someone is mowing their lawn you'll probably hear that I apologize so the first thing you want to do is confirm that your leopard gecko is actually egg bound so first do you have a female I'm going to put a picture on the screen here and that will show you what a female looks like compared to a male. Now, if you've confirmed you have a female, then we can go ahead and continue with this video. If you in fact have a male and you're suspecting that your male is egg bound, my guess is that there's either a lot of obesity occurring or some sort of intestinal blockage. Maybe it's impaction, maybe it's a tumor, something like that. Because if you're thinking your gecko is egg bound and it's in fact a male, I'm assuming it has like a bulbous abdomen, which you should consult a vet about. So log off this video, call your vet, good luck. Now, if you do have a female, now we know you have a girl, let's confirm that she actually has eggs or not. So I'm gonna put a picture on the screen here of what it looks like when a gecko is ovulating and when they have eggs underneath the surface of their skin. The good thing about leopard geckos is their skin is pretty transparent or translucent. So you can see through their skin, especially if there's like full eggs in there because the eggs are really white and so it's easy to see them. So if you do see eggs, or you see uh, ovarian follicles, then you know we're on the right track here. So if you see eggs, it's possible they're egg bound. If you see ovarian follicles, they're probably not egg bound because they haven't developed full eggs yet, but that is something you will have to consider because sometimes ovarian follicles will develop into eggs. Not always, but sometimes. There's also a condition called follicle stasis, and if you notice that your gecko is having a really bloated abdomen, but you don't see any eggs, but you do see follicles, it's possible they have a buildup of these follicles, and that condition can be fatal, so log off this video, call a vet. Back to egg binding. So we have confirmed in fact that your gecko does have eggs or may be developing eggs. Now if your gecko does have eggs, like I said, you'll see the big white ovals through their underside. If your gecko has only had these big white circles for a few days, they're probably not egg bound yet. Egg binding typically happens once weeks have passed and the eggs will not be laid. There's a number of reasons why this can happen. Before we get into that, I wanna talk about what egg binding looks like. So you're gonna have a gecko that has a very enlarged swollen abdomen. Sometimes it can look like uncomfortably bulbous. In addition to that, you can notice that their tail might be a bit thin because to create these eggs, their body just sucked the nutrients and the fat out of their tail that they've been storing so their tail can look thin. You may also notice the actual eggs, which I think is the best indicator of a gecko being egg bound is you see eggs and they haven't been laid and it's been more than a few weeks. The appetite of your gecko can also be affected, whether that means that they're really hungry because they're lost a lot of their stores in their tail and they need to make up for it because they're growing the eggs. And sometimes, unfortunately, geckos will go off food when they're egg bound or ovulating in general. And then that's a whole separate situation we can talk about in a bit. But a change in appetite is pretty common for geckos that are ovulating or egg bound. Your gecko may also be visibly uncomfortable. They could be restless or lethargic. They could be digging a lot. They just will have a different mood about them because their body's got two massive eggs inside of it and it's not a pleasant time. But again, the best way to tell if your gecko is egg bound is to look for eggs and if those eggs have been there for a while, especially if it's been weeks that those big prominent eggs have been there and they haven't been laid. Typically, in my experience, when you're able to see those big eggs through their skin, they should be laying them within a few days. 
So if you come to the conclusion that your gecko may be egg bound, you're going to want to call a vet immediately. The vet may prescribe a liquid calcium supplement that will help to like strengthen your gecko because their calcium stores have been depleted as they're growing these eggs. They're also going to probably do an ultrasound or an x-ray in order to look at the condition of your gecko and the eggs. They may also encourage you to assist feed your gecko if they're not eating. That can be in the form of critical care or rapashi grub pie or something like that where you can put the food in a little syringe and give it to them by mouth. Now this is not something that I recommend people do unless their vet has recommended it or unless they have experience doing so because you can you know overfeed your gecko or you can choke your gecko or just cause a lot of discomfort and um, irritation in a situation that's already stressful. And so if you just don't have experience holding a gecko and assist feeding them, I don't recommend it. If your vet suggests it, ask your vet to do it in person so that you have an idea of how it's done. And I'll include a clip on the screen here of me assist feeding one of my geckos. It's literally just rapashi grub pie mixed with water. And instead of allowing it to solidify into like a gel, I add more water and keep it kind of thinner. That way it's a nice liquid that's easy for them to get. You can do this if your gecko is egg bound. I had to do this with Melisandre when she was egg bound, not only in 2019, but it last year as well. So it's not pleasant. For a gecko like Melisandre, who's an enigma, it's particularly stressful, but it is something that you might have to do. And if your vet recommends it, then obviously your vet knows well and you should do that. But again, I reiterate, please don't just assist feed your gecko unless your vet recommends it and shows you how. You're going to be responsible for anybody choking their gecko or overfeeding them or whatever. So have your vet approve it first. The vet may also consider performing surgery on your gecko to remove the eggs. They also may consider other intervention methods, like I believe they can inject a hormone that will um, kind of like encourage your gecko to lay the eggs, but it's not always successful. Even the surgery is not always successful, especially if the reptile's on the smaller side, like a leopard gecko. Surgery also isn't always successful because once you remove the eggs, the healing process takes time. And it's such a small animal to operate on that it's kind of risky in the first place, but it can be done. There's tons of reptiles who have been egg bound or who have even had follicle stasis and they've been able to remove the eggs. But in this situation, I think they'd probably also spay your gecko so they don't lay eggs again in the future. But I personally didn't have to have my gecko have surgery because my vet prescribed two weeks of assisted feedings and calcium and we just like kept an eye on her during that two weeks and she did lay one of the eggs at the end of that two weeks and then if like some time later laid the second one but your gecko might not lay with additional calcium and additional food and that could just be the way your gecko is and so if surgery is required then surgery is required another thing i want to know is that sometimes eggs that are laid look really weird like for example melisandre's egg bound eggs had started to like harden and they had a really weird texture to them and so you know your gecko if they do lay those eggs or if they're removed surgically they might look really weird compared to what normal leopard gecko eggs are supposed to look like and i'll put a comparison picture on the screen so you can see yeah super weird also, you're going to want to make sure that your gecko has proper lay boxes. We'll get to that when we get to reasons why a gecko could be egg bound in the first place, but your vet may also discuss with you having a proper lay box and that's, you know, something you definitely need. I had three lay boxes for Melisandre and she decided to lay in the middle of her floor. Every time, every time she lays eggs and she's egg bound, she lays them on the floor. If she's not egg bound, she lays them in her humid hide. I don't know why, but I offered three different textures and three different types of hides and she just, she, she didn't like any of them. It's just how it goes. Let's talk about what can cause egg binding in leopard geckos. And I think the number one reason is the lack of calcium because it can take a lot of strength for them to be able to push out those eggs. So lack of calcium and lack of nourishment are probably two of the most commonly seen reasons. It could also be because they don't have an appropriate laying spot like I was just talking about. You definitely want to offer a little plastic container that has a hole in it and a 
lid on top. Make sure that the medium that you're putting inside of this lay box is a couple inches deep. Make sure that it is moist. There's a lot of different substrate choices you have. You can use soil, you can use coconut fiber, you can use moss, you can use vermiculite, you can use really anything that allows them to dig and bury the eggs. I want to reiterate though, you're going to want a couple inches of it, so make sure that your, you know, box is big enough. But some geckos may not lay in this box anyway. It just goes like that. You want to put this box somewhere between the warm and the cool side of the enclosure. And a lot of times you can just kind of incorporate your humid hide to be the lay box. So it's just going to depend. Your, your husbandry might not allow for that, but yeah, offer a couple different spots if you think your gecko, you know, is being particularly picky about where they want to lay. But ultimately, have somewhere with moist substrate for your gecko to lay their eggs. Another reason that your gecko might not be able to lay their eggs and therefore become egg bound is because they have a skeletal defect or some sort of uh, genetic disorder or they have a weakened immune system or they have some sort of structural issue. Structural. They have some sort of biological issue. The reason we think Melisandre becomes egg bound is because she has a neurological disorder associated with her morph called Enigma syndrome and that can just make everything a bit wonkier for her, a bit more challenging. And so egg laying, I think, is also one of those things. A gecko can also experience egg binding if they've been bred a bunch in that season or over their life. And eventually just they have an egg binding situation once. And usually it's because they've just had so many eggs develop fine that like the last ones, they've got lack of calcium, lack of nourishment. They're just tired, something like that. And then they hold on to those eggs longer than they should. It's also worth mentioning that if your gecko has been egg bound before, they can be egg bound again in the future. Like I said, Melisandre, she laid eggs in 2019, 2020, 2021. In 2019, she laid um, those really weird looking eggs and she was egg bound. The following year, she laid completely normal eggs and she laid them in her humid hide and everything was normal. And then the following year again, she was egg bound and she laid two kind of weird eggs separately, but nothing was as bad as the first time around. So progress, you know, but still not great. I wish she wouldn't lay eggs at all, but she just, she makes the, makes the eggs. She's making eggs right now as we're speaking. Ugh. But I hope that this video brought you some peace when it comes to worrying about a gecko that may or may not have eggs or may or may not be egg bound. If you found this informational and insightful, please let me know down below by leaving a like and a comment. Also, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, all the good stuff. Please consider supporting us on Patreon or by becoming a channel member. We would love to have you. And with all that said, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. And a special thank you from me, Benjen, and the rest of the animals here at Discus Animal Friends to our patrons and channel members. Mm -hmm.